Hi guys, I'm Bobsy, and in this video of the survival series with multiplayer, we're going to continue off by building out the items a little bit so we can have some more modularity in terms of the items that'll be on the ground. You can pick them up and so on and so forth. So in order to start with this, I want to make sure that we can handle the interactions properly. And for that, I just want to make like a game manager in the scene. I'm just going to put that 0, 0, 0. And I want to make a new script, which I think I will call something like interaction manager, which will be responsible for handling us interacting with things. Now this will just be a mono behavior script. There's actually no need to network this script. Let's plop that onto here. And the interaction manager here will now be responsible for essentially handling all the interactions. First things first, we've got to figure out what is it that we will be interacting with. And for that, I want to make an abstract class. Let me just first of all call this a interactable and this will inherit from network behavior. If you're not familiar with abstracts, it's similar to interfaces in the way that you can set uh, essentially rules for what has to be in the uh, in the class that inherent from it. So for example, we can do public abstract void interact, and this will be responsible for what happens when we interact. And essentially now, because it's abstract, we're forced to use it. You can also use virtual, so I can make a public virtual void on hover. Oh, and of course this needs to be opened up like so. And this now means that we can override this if we want to, whereas this one we have to override. Now the difference also from abstraction is that it also acts as a normal class in the sense that if you're inherent from a interactable, you'll also be acting as a network behavior. So now we can also copy this and this can be on stop hover and we can also make a public virtual pool which can be whether we can interact for example this is just for future purpose in case we have some items that we might want to be able to interact with and some that we don't and by default we can just have it return true but again you can then override it and do something else with it if you want so now we have these and essentially our interactable class set up now let's handle how the interaction manager actually handles the various interactions so first of all let's remember to work with layers it's very very useful whenever you do anything in terms of ray casting so let's do layer mask and this will be interactable layer for example so this is anything that we can interact with now we can also set a serialized field for a interaction distance that we want let's just default that to something like four and now next thing is we also need some kind of reference to the camera that we'll be uh ray casting from so let's do the uh, let's store the camera like this and we also uh, want to track which uh, interactable is our current interactable as you can see it already knows what this we're trying to do our setup in this game is a little bit different as the camera is actually on the player and we're destroying it when we start this is normally not really how i do things and i don't think we should be doing that here either let me take out the player let me grab the camera from here and just copy paste that into the scene just so we have it and now let me also remove the camera from here and let's instead apply this to the player now we Quickly now changing this with the camera. Let me just put the camera up top. You can see that this is tagged with camera.main. You can also lower the clipping planes a little bit or maybe increase the FOV a little bit, something like that. Um, but regardless, what I was trying to say is with the player now, since we don't have a camera here, what we want to do is we want to get the camera dynamically. So instead of this, we can just remove the serialized field and we can just move this down to the rest of our private variables. And I can also just rename this to be underscore in front. And now with this, what we want to do is we can essentially set the, so if it's not owner, we still just want to return. And if we are the owner, what we want to do is we want to get the camera from the scene by just doing camera of main because it was tagged as the main camera. Therefore we can easily just get it like this. Now another thing we also want to do is we want to make sure that we now nest it as a child of our player and also that we position it correctly so instead let's make a serialized field private vector 3 and let's call this camera offset and we can always set this in editor and what we want to do essentially is we want to set the whoops we want to set the player camera as a child of our um player so let's do player camera dot transform dot set parent equals to the transform that we're on here and then we also want the player camera transform local position to be equal to the camera offset. And to help ourselves a little bit, we can also draw gizmos here. Uh, as you can see, we already have some in here, which I think is for the ground check. But we can then also make a gizmos.color. I can make that maybe, let's do blue. And let's make this a gizmos.drawwiresphere. And let's have that happen wherever um, at the transform.position. Um, actually, let's do transform transform point i believe it is with the offset uh, with the camera offset and then we essentially have to give it some kind of radius let's just make it 0 0.1 so now we should be able to easily see on the player exactly where the camera will be positioned now let me try and move the player over here and we should be able to see now if i change the camera offset you can see a little blue i guess blue was a terrible color for this because uh, you know he's kind of he's kind of blue so let me go with green maybe just to make it a little bit more visible and there you go now you can see this green little sphere right in about eye height which is where i want it 
Now we can just save this to the prefab and destroy that again. And to just test it quickly, let's just start up. And as you can see, that works. We're now inside our player again. We grab the camera, it's parented correctly. Yeah. So now this works. And this now means that we have a camera in the scene. Now, just going back to the interaction manager, the reason for this was because now in awake, we can do the same thing. We can grab the camera with camera.main. Now let's handle the actual interaction stuff. So going into update, uh, what we want to do is first of all, when we click on something, we want to do that with input.getKeyDown. And let's do something like, so if we get the mouse button down or we get the input.getKeyDown and let's do keycode.e. For example, so if we get one of these buttons down, we want to do something, but now we can essentially invert these and just say, if we're not getting any of the buttons down like so, we return and then we can run whatever logic that we want to do in here. Now, in my case, I want to raycast. So I'm going to do it an if physics.raycast and then we're going to do underscore camera transform the position. So we want to do it from the camera in the camera direction dot forward. So let's do transform dot forward. And then we want to out our raycast hit, which is our hit. And then essentially we want to do it with the interaction distance. Uh, what did I call this? Interact distance. I want it with our interact distance with our interactable layer, like so. And once again, we can essentially just invert this. So if we don't hit anything, we just return. And now we want to do essentially whatever happens once we've gotten the, once we've hit something essentially, once we've hit an item, what do we do? So now, first of all, we start by getting all the interactable components. Now the reason for this is because we could potentially have more interactables in the future, which is why I want the full array of them. And now we can for each through this array of the interactables. And then we can do if we can interact with the interactables or if interactable dot can interact, then we want to do interactable dot uh, interact. So we just want to call the interact on it or whatever happens when we interact. So this should work now for the picking up and the dropping. And now let's go back to our item and make it into a, a interactable item here. Let's do that, which means we now need to implement the missing member, which was the interact. And this can now essentially call the pickup. So if we do this now, let's try and go and test. So now when we go and we essentially press E or press the mouse button on it, it should disappear and it should go into our inventory. Then I can see we're here. When we press tab, we have the inventory. If I go over here and I press E on it, uh, whoops, hold on. Oh, we forgot to set up the interaction layers, of course. Let's go into the game manager and the layers. And I'll just make this the, uh, I guess actually let's quickly make a layer for the players. So I'll make a new layer. I'll just call this player. And let's also for that take make a layer for items. Whoops, no, there we go. For items. I guess let's make a layer for interactables and we can also make a layer for items if we want that. Um, and then let me add the player to this layer. Yes, I want to change the children. Let's also take uh, all of these items and just move them out a little bit. So like that, that, like that, like that, just so they're not on top of each other. And let's change these to be on the items layer. And let's make the game manager interact with the interactables and the items layer. Like so. Now let me try and go here. And now when I hit E, there we go, now we interacted with it and you can see we got it in our inventory. I go around and I hit E on all of them. You can see we now got it in our inventory and it stacks. So now we can essentially pick them up like that. Now, you, uh, let's just quickly also implement the hovers. I just like the idea of having hovers. You can do stuff with outlines or whatever that you'd like to do. Now I'm gonna do this in a separate method. So I'm gonna call this handle hovers, for example, something like that. And then I can go down here, make a private void that I call handle hovers. And we can handle these pretty much individually or separately, I mean. First things first, same raycast. And we also want to store the interactable, so similar to what we do up here. And I also want the ability to be able to clear whatever we're hovering. So let's make private void, clear hover, like so. And what we can do is if the current hovered interactable is null, um, then we return. And if it's not null, we'll do current hovered interactable dot on stop hover. And we'll do current hovered interactable equals to null, like so. It's now essentially no longer storing it. The reason for this is we can start by first of all, just checking that if the interactables uh, is null or the length is zero, then we essentially want to clear the hover and return here. Um, what we can also check is if they are valid. So if the interactables Oh, sorry, if the current interactables uh, and we've hit the same object, so we can do and hit dot collider dot game object equals to current interactable dot game object. Then we also want to return. This is because, you know, if we're hovering over the same thing, we essentially don't want to, you know, redo it. Um, and then what we can do is we can set the current hovered interactable to be uh, just any interactable on the item. And then we can just move through uh, all of the interactables that we found like so, this will be interactable. And now we can just go through each of them and if we can interact, they will be hovered, right? So similar thing to what we do up here. So if can interact, but instead of this, we'll do on hover, like so. 
So now we should be able to start and stop the hover. Um, what I do realize though is I guess we're not stopping the hover on all of them. So I guess instead, uh, let's maybe store all the interactables that we're hovering with. So let's do a interactable and make it into an array instead. So let's see if there is an array that's not equal to null and current hover interactables dot length is greater than zero. And the hit collider game objects. So this will be zero and then we'll for each through all of them and we'll do interactable dot on stop hover like that. And then if this is null or the length is less than or equal to zero, then we'll return. And this will just be equals to the full array. I think this should maybe do the trick. Um, and then let's also just check the game object against the first entry. I think this should do the trick. So now it should start and stop the hover on all of them, if I'm not wrong. And yeah, so here we go. So now in the item, for example, if you want to do something when you start hovering, we can essentially, uh, oh, sorry, that's called on hover. You can essentially just override the on hover and then you can do whatever you want here. But in our case, we're not going to do anything right now. Well, we can test that it works. Maybe a good idea is on stop hover. Let's just do debug.log started hovering. Oh, whoops, that's the wrong one. This was started hovering and this is stopped hovering. So just let's confirm that this works real quick. Then we have an item set up. That's hopefully good to go. So I'm just going to click and click. Uh, and we can see the started hovering has been called five times, but the stopped hovering doesn't seem to be called. So let's have a look at that. So why is that? When we clear the hover length is less than... This should work. I wonder where it stops. So let's try and do debug.log. I mean, it will stop there and it should. I mean, if it reaches in here, mm, this is interesting. Oh, of course, of course, of course, of course. We also got to do if we're not hitting anything, we also want to clear the hover like that. I think that should do the trick. That was what we were missing. So now let's try and hover over it. Stop. Yeah, there we go. Started, stopped, started, stopped. Cool. Okay. So that looks like that's working out too. Good thing we, we tested. All right. So I can remove this now and let's just make the items quickly work with multiplayer as well. So first of all, I guess, let me quickly just delete all the test items here, just so I only have to modify one. Let's add a rigid body to it. And let's also on the item here, let's have a reference to the rigid body. Serialize field, private rigid body. That'll just be the rigid body. And then we'll do on spawn. And we'll do if, uh, let's just have only the server control the rigid body. So if it's not server, we'll do kinematic to true, uh, like that. Yeah, or I guess technically we can just do that. Now we can give it, we have given it the rigid body, which means only the server should be controlling it. And we can also give it the network transform to make sure that it aligns for everyone. And I think this should work. Now let me also just quickly disable some of these gizmos. I just don't like seeing them all the time. There we go. Okay, cool. So now let me try and just save this. Let's make a prefab out of the test item as well. Let me drag and drop that in here and let me copy a bunch of these like so. And now when we start, we should see them here on the ground and we can pick them up. And now let me try and have the client join. There we go. I'm gonna pick up one of them like so. I'm gonna try and have the client join. So the client is now in. We can do the client move around and he can also pick them up. And there we go. This now works. Now, one thing though, uh, and actually just so you can see as well, you can see how this works because this guy only has one because he only ever picked up one. Now if I take the client and you can see here, let me also pick up the last one, which means he's picked up three. And now you can see he has three in his inventory. So you, you both have your own inventory now and this should work perfectly fine uh, so as you can see three and one so there we go so now we have a basic setup with items and inventories and so on and next video we can start moving on with even more interesting stuff maybe making something you can equip or consume and we for that sake we also of course going to make it so you can drop them again um, and stuff like this yeah so hopefully you're learning something new every time and hopefully you like the video series so far other than that please do leave a like comment and subscribe and i just hope that you have a wonderful day